Welcome to the Listen to Us Roundabout Movies podcast. Let's start the show. Here are your hosts, Wes Ford and Zach Harris. All right, uh, thanks for that, Ronald. Uh, Ray and Ronald is a new member of the team. Uh, he's going to be joining the crew here at uh, the Listen to Us Rant podcast, and uh, we're lucky to have him. Thanks for having me. I look forward to working with you two on this podcast show. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm Wes Ford. I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and drink while we do it. It's good to be back. Uh, we're still in the quarantine, the, the craziness of 2020, but here we are. We are back on the mic to discuss. Well, we're going to be discussing what we've been watching, followed by a review of Dave Franco's directorial debut, The Rental. And tonight, I am drinking a beer I've never had before. But I thought the name was kind of funny and appropriate for our movie. Was uh, It's a um, goofy-footed American wheat ale. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and who makes that? I think... Oh, it's made by um, Escape Brewing Company. They're in Florida. All right, all right. Yeah. And I'm what drinking you... um, Half Acre, one of my faves, Tome. Got a real Tome. nice, real nice minimal can here. Daddy's liking. Ooh, very good. Yeah. It's a hazy, yeah, here. hazy, hazy pale ale. Ooh, liking that too. Nice yeah. little foot action there. Little foot. Um, let's give it a, let's give it a little taste. Get set going. I'm in. Yeah. Ooh, this is tasty. Yeah. Tasty. Daddy Fruity. likes. Daddy likes. <laughs> it's a weed ale, so it's got it's got that um that profile to it, but it's got it's almost like a sweety fruity, but it's not too sweet. I don't know, it's got like a nice like almost like a fruit undertone. It's tasty. I can just like chug these things. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Do it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Chug it right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh have you had yours before? No, I haven't, and I was excited to try it. It's real tasty. Hazy hazy pale ale and it uh Measures up to that, I would say. It's what I, love I the expected hazies. in a nice way. I love the hazies. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Solid. All right. Well, before we discuss what we've been watching, I'd like to remind our listeners that... Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audio book download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N. Choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now back to you, Wes. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> Forgot you were there. Uh, well, if you like what you hear on this episode, remember you can find other episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. All right, let's get into it. Let's do it. Zach, you want to kick it off? All right, well, um, I guess the first thing, I haven't watched a ton, been moving, long process, um, but I did crack my, uh, New laser disc I got in, prized a uh, white whale of a movie, which is uh, Hanu Man versus the Seven Ultra Brothers, um, Ooh. which was a Thai co-production with Subayara, who's the company that makes Ultraman, and seemingly like them trying to start their like own Ultraman type thing with Hanu Man. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they just licensed all the the Ultraman to be in it. It kind of makes no sense. Um, but it was, uh, definitely a lot of fun and real weird, real, real yeah. weird. There's like, I mean, Hanuman is like the spirit of like a dead child that like dies in the movie and like all this like real bizarre shit. But, uh, 
some really cool miniatures um really good big ass fight scene at the end classic nice. like kaiju stuff and um yeah it was fun i had some subtitle issues but uh that were a little detracting from the experience maybe but yeah. and, um it was enjoyable i i definitely liked it i can see also though why it is buried <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool though sort of like a, a almost a lost gem you know totally mm-hmm. that's cool it's always fun to watch absolutely um i have been on a little bit of a japanese kick um sort of i was i was trying to prep myself emotionally because i was very excited for this game called ghost of tsushima mm-hmm. it's a samurai game on ps4 if no one knows what that i've heard of that and uh, it's amazing it's amazing it's the ultimate samurai cinema mo- uh game ever oh, made, yeah and i love it um but to sort of lead up to that i watched um a few things i did rewatch one of my favorite movies ever seven samurai just to get into oh, that yeah. mindset they've got a mm-hmm. kurosawa mode you flip that on it becomes like a grainy black and white and Ooh, looks okay. it looks spot on to like the look of seven samurai it's crazy Hell yeah yeah it, it, they did a really good job on that um so watch that that was fun and then i rewatched 13 assassins that was uh that was great too good to have i got that on Mm blu-ray um but i also watched the hidden fortress which i had never actually gotten to nice that's a good one and um yeah that was just a good one i hadn't seen it before i Mm -hmm. watched it on what did i watch it on oh i think it was on prime oh yeah um but yeah i finally got to that one and uh it was great good stuff man sweet um A lot of Star Wars influence coming from that bad boy. Yep, for sure. I had always heard that. One of the main reasons Mm -hmm. I want to watch it, plus Kurosawa. Um, And uh, I thought it was, it wasn't much of a samurai movie up till the end. It's sort Mm -hmm. of a long, drawn out, very slow build. Um, And then the end, it gets very exciting and gets that samurai action in there. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Glad I watched it. There's many more I haven't seen, but... um, making my way through them hell yeah man yeah nice well um i watched phase four the saul bass movie uh have you seen this one Mm -mm. i feel like you'd like it you should check it out it's pretty cool basically like like, um it's saul bass you know like the designer who did like it's famous for like title sequences and stuff directed it um i'm pretty sure it's the only feature he's directed could be wrong but um it's uh basically about like guys in the desert in this research facility studying the patterns of ants like the ants around them are sort of like becoming like working together and like showing signs of maybe like not necessarily evolution but um greater consciousness you Mm. know so um that's fascinating yeah it's pretty cool it's really weird and uh interesting pace but i really liked it the macro of the ant footage is unbelievable like so cool there's all these shots because they're tracking ants and their movements you know so it starts with a huge montage and i was like holy shit like seriously like tracking an ant walking down like a ant hallway <laughs> like you know like, <laughs> like in a yeah. dolly shot it's it's really cool um and also, I had seen it before, but there was a, a Blu-ray came out recently, so that's what I watched it on. And there was the alternate ending, which I had never seen, which is just a fucking winner. And uh, I don't know wow. why. I really wish there was an edit of the movie with it in there, because it's not necessarily different. It's kind of just like extended based on what's in the movie. Mm. So I always thought that sequence was really cool. It's kind of like a crazy uh, abstract imagery sort of thing. But it really yeah. goes off on that like full extended ending and it's fucking sick and um i think the movie would get more cred probably if like people saw it because it's really interesting usually it's not it's the it's the opposite when you see like an alternate ending most of the time Mm -hmm. they pick the right ending or yeah the right direction it's it's kind of rare to find a you watch an alternate 
ending and it's sort of like oh, you should have gone should have gone with that one yeah <laughs> yeah and I, I don't know i haven't done a ton of research on it but it wouldn't surprise me if it was like forced to be removed like he like the people who like financed it were like are you the studio me? or whatever yeah. i'm not Probably. i'm not putting that shit in there but right. um because that's real wacky but it's really cool um and yeah it was a great rewatch looked great on blu-ray and it's enjoyed it is a documentary time. No, it's a it's like a narrative. It's fictional narrative. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what year. Let me see what year. I guess I got pulled up on here. All about ants, huh? Yeah, it's fucking great. Seventy four. Yeah. Good time period. I think you'd like it. Yeah, I'll check it's it out, man. Yeah, it's a good one. Cool stuff. <clears throat> I uh, I'll do a quick one. Just because this one literally is 10 minutes long. Mm-hmm. And then I'll follow it up with something else. But just wanted to pop it in there. Uh, you ever seen The Hug? It's a short film. Oh, I've seen the thumbnail for it, but I've never watched it. I think it's on Hulu. And okay, It's uh, a short? I always thought it was it's a, a short. Okay. It's a short. It's like 10, 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's like, why not watch it? I saw that, and the, the image was interesting. Dude, I think you would enjoy it. It's... Um, nice. It's hard to give away because it's literally only ten minutes, uh, yeah, but it's yeah. it's bit it 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 go, it it dives into those fears that you had when you were a kid and going to Chuck E. Cheese and seeing like mm-hmm. the weird animatronic dolls, like the creepy yeah, yeah. dolls. It feeds on that fear a little bit, and nice. uh, it's really wacky. Worth your time. It's worth ten minutes. It's hell yeah. Check it out. Mm. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, but also on Hulu, I watched uh, Palm Springs. Oh, okay, yeah. I haven't yeah. watched that yet. I think you should check it out. I really enjoyed it. I um, I thought it was very funny. Um, it was a lot better than I expected it to be. They take a concept that has been done many times before, but they have their own spin on it. And with the, with the acting and sort of the unique twist that they place on this gimmick quote-unquote so to speak with this film i don't want to give it away the less you know the better honestly but they there is something that they do uniquely with this concept and um, i think it's really worth watching it's sort of like i feel like this is what would happen with this concept in reality so um again try not to spoil anything but check it out very funny definitely worth your time i think it's probably up there in the list of some of the better films i've seen this year i don't think that i mean that list is very small at this Mm -hmm. point obviously this year has been crazy um so i haven't seen a lot but definitely check it out check it out yeah good fun yeah palm springs it's on it's on hulu nice um, I really haven't watched much else. I think I watched, I guess I watched The Killer, John Woo movie, did a rewatch of that. Um, nice. It's great. Really enjoyed it. And, uh, oh, wait. I guess I'll wrap up The Killer, but it's just saying Chai Yun Fat's great, and it's a great movie. Um, nice. Have you seen that? You should check it out if you haven't. It's fun. The Killer. Mm. What about, hard, have you seen Hard Boiled? No, but I've heard of that one. That one's coming up next. I got both the um the Criterion laser discs of them. <laughs> oh, you got the I mean, crit laser discs? Yeah, yeah. Of Very the killer nice. and uh, hard boiled. So rewatch the killer, rewatch and hard boiled next. But one thing I watched was Unfriended. Um, I've heard of I've. Okay. Have you seen this movie? I have not seen it, but I've heard weird things about it. Honestly, dude, worth a watch. I thought it was fun. Yeah. I liked it. It's like that's the, what know, I've heard desktop horror movie you know yeah 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 and it's like so obvious parts of it and parts of it are so bad you know like some of the kills are kind of like okay but part of it's like pretty genuinely like disturbing or scary and i do think that they it like sustained the pace really well it's like 80 minutes and it was well edited to the point where like wow i was like oh shit this thing's almost over you know, like, yeah, oh, it was ramping up. And uh, it also uses, for the most part, all actual things. Like, 
like, like actual the modeling of the windows are is like they would be on a mac they're right. on facebook they're like which i feel like is something that if you didn't do that for some reason would just like annoy the shit out of me the whole time <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean yeah so totally. like that was something that i was definitely like looking for not to be like fuck this movie but it's like it's gonna bug me if that happens and it didn't yeah i didn't, I I didn't notice it very much so um it's all like, yeah. all on a screen right Quote, yeah unquote, totally sort of, yeah yeah it's almost like someone just like screen recorded a laptop for like you know right 80 minutes but yeah i thought it was fun and honestly i i saw that dark web was on hbo a little while ago and i was like i gotta watch these movies the sequel and now I'm, like, pissed because they took it off. I'm like, fucking <laughs> Unfriended Dark Web is on HBO. Like, all these movies to watch. I'm, like, sore about Unfriended Dark right. <laughs> But, uh... <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> like, have a subscription to the Criterion channel and, like, a shelf of, like, 100 Blu-rays I haven't watched. And it's like, Unfriended Dark Web! <laughs> yeah, come on! <laughs> but still, I, I'm down to watch it. And, like, I was, I was pretty, uh... I was pretty surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Like... Not what like I've heard. incredible, but like definitely worth a watch for sure. Yeah, I gotta check it out sometime. Um, yeah, I that I that also follows around. There was a, a similar movie right after that mm-hmm. with John. What's Cho. his name? Cho. Yes. Searching, right? Searching. Thank you. Yeah, I never saw that one. That was another one where I was actually very surprised at the format. I thought like they. They did the format, mm-hmm. taking that concept, and they did a good job with that. Totally. Um, worth a watch. Not like a movie like, I'm going to buy that. But it's, yeah. but it's like, interesting. Taking that concept and doing it effectively, I thought was was nice. Yeah, and, totally. And having like a good pacing and editing. Mm-hmm. So worth checking out. Did you see that, um, this was a while ago, but like Timur Bekmenetov or I don't know if I'm... Like Mimbatov, who did uh, like Night Watch and Wanted, said yeah. that he was going to do a bunch of Wanted sequels all in computer screens. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's make it happen, baby. Wanted was is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I I, I kind of hate pretty that bad. Movie. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It's so curve bad. bullets. <laughs> <laughs> the final the final shot where he shoots it through it goes like just through an infinite city it's, mm. it's like it's through this bedroom window cu- goes through a fucking glass of water cuts through this garden like so outrageous uh, outrageous and curves around this building and goes it's like literally impossible anyway yeah. um i guess i'll say one more i finally watched a movie that i've been really trying to trying to get to um first cow hell yeah Loved What'd it. Think? Thought it was great. Great, right? I honestly, I hadn't watched any. I think I'd watched a trailer like way back, like last year or something. Mm. But I don't. I didn't remember anything from it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't try to refresh myself. I just wanted to go in kind of fresh. I, and it was a lot different than I expected because I kind of mm-hmm. knew it was like a western. I knew it was a twenty four. Um. And I knew it had something to do with like a, a Chinese immigrant, and and mm-hmm. that was that. That was like all I knew um but very surprised i I don't know i just i liked i liked the concept it's so quaint and i love that it's a food movie yes oh yes so good i i wasn't expecting it i love it was just like what yeah this movie is fucking delightful it is just so good (laughs) like i really want some oil cakes you know i know right they looked amazing the little honey drizzle on top and everything Mm -hmm. was just like oh um but yeah a very interesting um just a really well executed, interesting concept. I thought the the shots were the cinematography was excellent. Um, yeah, love the, the look. The general direction of the movie was was awesome. Um, like I like both of the main characters, um, how they like kind of get into the concept and then they get onto oh we can make you know money off this and mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was just a delightful film and a definite highlight for this year taste of london <laughs> yes that's a uh, taste hmm. Hmm. like chews on it for quite a long yeah. time it's yeah. taste of london yeah i was also uh, a big fan of the like uh little like framing device thing 
just the real little quick beginning and end loved it yeah totally yeah it looks good yeah yeah it was a uh, it was a great concept like i said and it's and, and sort of like what a run down piece of the wild west you know just like seriously yeah the slums and um but that's that's sort of what makes those cakes so delightful right it's just like mm-hmm. they would do anything to get just like this little slice of heaven because they yeah, live fucking in fucking sucks <laughs> it, yeah. yeah it sucks out there it's muddy it's disgusting there's people trying to kill you like um yeah good movie first yeah, cow loved it hell yeah all right that does it for me yeah that's pretty much it for me i feel like i there was maybe something else but i, I haven't i haven't watched that much either yeah um, it's been a long time i watched um gretel and hansel before i moved it feels like a fucking year ago um did you ever see that Mm-mm. the new one no yeah it's okay it's okay yeah looked really good but like hmm. yeah not what the Maybe maybe for free. Maybe it's like you're really in the in the vibe and it's like free on there. Yeah. Seems like something that's gonna be on Hulu in like a month. This was a uh, this was quite a bit ago, but I guess I guess I'll just throw it in there. I watched Hamilton on Disney Plus. Oh yeah. Yeah. How was that? It was good. I. Nice. I, I don't know. What? I feel like it had been hyped up so much, you know. Personally, like I feel like. If you don't like it, you can not like it. I'm fine. No, I did like it. I just didn't think it was like this alt world altering amazing play. You know? Yeah, there's no way I, to measure up to its hype. It's gigantic. Uh, yeah, it was very hyped up. Um, I don't know if I would pay six hundred dollars to like go see that. No way. No. I haven't seen it, but I also wouldn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, like it's not worth that. But I mean, the talent is really there. I, I thought the the music was the very catchy. I, I found myself like kind of singing it for days after. Um, mm. But nitty gritty, honestly, if we're getting into it, I thought that um, it was a little hard to follow because a, a play entirely of rap. Yeah. Well, it, it mixes different genres. There's Broadway. There's also hip hop rap, but um, there's also jazz. Um, but a movie entirely in that kind of style, I was, I was honestly I found it very difficult to follow uh, what was happening, just mm. because it's so fast and yeah. their dialogue is is rhymed into fast lyrics, and so I found that difficult. Yeah, all the exposition is just like facts you need to know, facts you need to know. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Yeah. It, it, I, I found it hard to to follow. But what I did is when it hit the um, the middle of it. I I ended up putting on subtitles and I did find myself enjoying it a lot more <laughs> once yeah. then because then I was like now I know what's going on um mm-hmm. but really cool to see I, I like the concept of um having an all like min- minority cast playing the majority of the roles and playing like the founding fathers pretty cool yeah. um I like the history into it I will say I don't think that Lin Manuel Miranda is like that great of an actor? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think he's. I think he was really hyped up. He was like the. He was the. He was probably the worst singer, on in the in the play, and he's the main yeah. character. Um. Yeah, I just don't see. I mean, I think it's really cool that he wrote it and stuff. I don't know if he should have made himself the main character. Yeah, I feel that. Um, that's I think that he didn't have quite the voice for it. Don't think he had quite the same amount of talent as like these big time of uh, actors that he had playing in these roles. They mm-hmm. sort of made him seem smaller in comparison. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the quick. You know, I'm just ranting. You know, You're that's fine. what we do. But that I'm yeah. just spitting out thoughts. But um, overall. As someone who came from theater, too, I sort of have a different perspective on this, too. I did it all through high school. I was really into it. Um, so I see it through that lens. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool and definitely worth a watch if you like theater. I just don't 
think that it was it didn't anywhere live up to the expectations that I had on it. Yeah, I guess. Personally. So. Yeah. For sure. All right, well, actually right now we are going to get into our non-spoiler review for the rental starting now. Let me show you out back, and then I'll get out of your hair. The stars are insane out here. I should have brought the telescope. What do you need a telescope in the city for? Unless you're like a peeping Tom or something. Description from IMDb. The rental. Two couples rent a vacation home for what should be a celebratory weekend getaway. This is the <coughs> 2020 directorial debut from Dave Franco. Also written by him and Joe Swanberg. Stars Dan Stevens, Allison Brie, Sheila Vand. And uh, it doesn't show the last guy, but uh, Jeremy Allen White. Those are sort of the main characters. Um, yeah, kind of a smaller film, a horror uh, thriller, if you if you so say so. And yeah. uh, would you would you think, Zach? Um, I thought it was okay. It was like fun enough. Uh, I I I enjoyed watching it. Like it was nice and brisk, which I appreciated. But there's a lot of um just kind of tropes that they lean on in it and also like decisions that are very like come with the territory that are just starting to get like a little annoying and yeah. while it's like oh, a lot of movies in this genre do this so it's like i guess not specifically this movie's fault it's just like always hoping that they're gonna subvert that you know what i mean and i think it kind of fell victim to a lot of the pitfalls that movies like this do um but that being said like i didn't dislike it and i enjoyed watching it yeah i'm pretty much on the same page as you um i had a good time watching it i enjoyed it um but it does fall into a category which i definitely enjoy um i just don't think it did anything particularly new with the concept or this yeah. the, the um genre i guess that it falls into mm -hmm. um we'll talk more about that in spoilers but because the trailer honestly itself is very vague so i did i did see the trailer but i even going into that i didn't i didn't really know what it was going to be about mm -hmm. i had some ideas but um that being said i didn't i did just have an overall good time with it i thought it was like shot pretty well i thought the actors yeah. did a pretty good job the direction was well done like i thought dave mm -hmm. franco did a good job directing it um i just don't think it had a particularly strong script or um uh it didn't go outside the box too much it's played it it played it pretty safe with very safe with the yeah. entire idea um i'd like to see i'd like to see if the if there ever expands beyond this movie um i'd like to see those boundaries pushed a little bit more um, because it didn't bring anything really new that we hadn't really seen before. And there's a lot of movies out there that definitely fit into this genre. And I think that um, it would have better served the film if it had done something a little more unique, a little something different, um, and really just, like I said, push those boundaries a bit more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's kind of what you'd expect. Yeah. 
And it's like sometimes that's fun. Like I I don't like think like fuck that. It needs to be a twist every fucking ten minutes. But like, yeah, yeah. When something happens in like the first, I mean, like I felt like I was just like calling shit out the whole time. Like oh, this is gonna happen, and it's like boom, there you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was very deliberate with its like placing of clues to the point where you're just like oh yeah, that's what it's gonna be. You're like yeah, okay. I thought there was one uh outcome that i was like okay uh, that's sort of a surprise but that's a spoiler yeah. thing um i think i know what you're talking about and i think i agree yeah um, i wasn't like oh my god wow but i was sort of like oh, okay nice surprise yeah. um and um yeah i think i had something else there but um most of it was sort of like okay sort of what i expected played out and I did enjoy the end. I sort of like the setup it tries to do, or at least the the conclusion that it has. Mm. Um, I enjoyed like the sort of the yeah, afterward type scene that happens. Yeah. Um, I thought, okay, cool, you're going that way. I like that. I dig that. Um, and fans of cinema and and horror, I think, could could dig that too. It just outside of that didn't exceptionally blow my mind or my expectations yeah Yeah, there's just a lot of frustration of like why are they doing that and it's like oh because that happened okay like things that happen in the beginning where you're like oh well this is coming back later it's like oh for sure there you go you know and there it is yeah yeah it's kind of like waiting for the beats to drop a little bit yeah in fact there's something that's so um on the nose my wife didn't watch this with me but she had sort of been around like the kitchen in the very beginning of me watching this movie Mm -hmm. and she calls something like telling you first 10 minutes of the movie she's like this is gonna happen i was like yeah you're probably right and it's (laughs) yeah totally (laughs) so it's like that kind of says something she didn't even watch the movie and she called it and it was like Mm -hmm. first 10 minutes it's like okay yeah um so i don't know i'd still say it's a 2020 film. We're real light on these. If you want to watch something, yeah. you want to have really some fun, check it out. Video. Yeah, check it out. I just don't think it was particularly memorable. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth the... It's like a good... If this was like added to Netflix, I would be like, yeah, watch it. But like... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I would pay money to watch it. Personally. Yeah, we, we paid to rent it. Yeah, that thing's I mean, getting... That thing's getting dropped in like weeks. Yeah, you know what I mean <laughs> on a streaming service. It's a it's a it's a good like pop on Netflix. Yeah, sure. totally. But yeah, I wouldn't pay to I wouldn't pay to rent it on like Prime or something. Yeah. We did that for you, and we're telling you you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> you can wait. You can wait. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's. I mean, I don't really know what else to say other than that. Um, yeah. I mean, it looked good, but I, I, I yeah. the score was like completely unremarkable i don't even remember it i don't even remember it um yeah i thought dan stevens was you know he was decent allison Mm -hmm. brie love her but pretty standard she's pretty standard um sheila vand i don't really know what else she's from but she had a bigger part to play the next but i thought she was good Mm -hmm. um yeah i've got more thoughts and spoilers so same here Before you get into our spoiler segment, I'd like to interject to discuss that special deal from our sponsor again. For the listeners of the Listen To Us Roundabout Movies podcast, Audible is offering a free audio book download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audio book today, go to audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N for your free audio book. Be over. 
Look, this is not okay, Charlie, all right? Stop being so calm. Everything is fine. biggest thing is i'm just way out on this affair storyline just did not need to be in the movie at all i don't need it like yeah it's literally only a reason for them to not call the cops right yep and it's it's the only reason it's the only thing that like they needed some dirt to for them to be like yeah exactly not call the cops and for them to sort of um try and find like this footage right to like sort of yeah it's literally only a device to create that yeah yeah um just not necessary like i think the movie and it happens right away and you know the second the movie starts and she's like around his shoulders and then the guy walks in yeah so that's the part that emily saw and she wouldn't even watch the movie she saw that part and she's like they're gonna bang later in the movie and 100 percent, it was like the first night you know that they're there no real build up to the tension it couldn't even be like the second night or anything like there's no build up like it was right away totally it's just like so so obvious and so only there for like that reason you know yeah um and he does it with every relationship you know yeah i don't know it was not the best execution um yeah so i definitely saw that coming that was only a device for these sort for that to not happen which is i guess it's it's not the worst thing in the world but like i would let that go if there was something more to the film that sort of pushed the yeah. envelope a little bit more you know um it just seems to me like if you're when you watch a horror movie like this i guess part of the fun is being like these people are so stupid like they're all going to die you know yeah but um I also think there's something to be said about, like, if they take all the channels that, like, you would do and it still happens, it's scarier. Like, if if they just go, fuck it, call the cops right now, and it's like, yeah, nobody's coming to help you. That's scarier than not them being like, we can't call the cops because, like, we had sex in a shower. You know what I mean? It's just, like, it's kind of sacrificing the horror for this, like emotional sort of like entanglement that's going on that really doesn't have any value in the movie other than that. I mean that is scary too I mean they're married their relationships are on the line it's a mess you know like that's no one wants to deal with that shit there's so much drama and backlash from that mm-hmm. I get that um but yeah it's just um what was the point you were trying to make I'm sorry I just thought it was unnecessary Okay. The, yeah the affair storyline like yeah. if it felt to me like it was mainly there as a hold up for later so that they could keep everything like self-contained and no one would like go you know and yeah, it's like yeah. and I, I think there's also something to be said about them having just like trying to make the tension or the disconnect between dan stevens and allison breed towards the end but that that aspect just didn't quite work for me um it was just very expected and the other thing that was extremely yeah. expected was her bowing out of doing molly the first night and it's like all right well they're all gonna get really high on molly and then no one's gonna want to do it tomorrow because who wants to do drugs two nights in a row especially Brie, molly yeah you're fucked like no one's yeah. gonna do it with you tomorrow such a classic party retreat thing oh yeah always happens the first night everyone goes yep. hard second night everyone wants to chill which was a funny i did get a chuckle out of the beat where dan stevens was like Let's just have a quiet night, hon. We can like watch a movie yeah. or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like let's just play some board games or something. Yeah, play some board <laughs> games. Yeah, such a classic thing. Oh yeah, yeah. It had some definite cliche moments. Um, and like you said earlier, I think that having the concept of it's way scarier. Like when you're when you go into the obvious and it still doesn't work out. Like that's yeah, terrifying. It's like. Okay, well, uh, listen, we fucked up. We 
had an affair, but this is like fucking important. We need to like call the cops because someone trying to kill us, um, and like they can't, you know. Yeah. Having like so it's like okay now everything's out in the open now what the fuck do we do you know like, mm-hmm. that's ter- that's terrifying. My wife's mad at me. My partner with work with this relationship is fucked, and we can't call the cops. This guy's just coming around killing people, you know. That's yeah. more scary. Yeah, because like. It's, I was never uh, scared at all in this movie either. No, not really. It, um, it also makes the killer like, I think with the ending they try to frame this like sort of like mastermind like this guy like works the system and is like yeah you know, it's like serial well, he's a, killer. He's like, a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. He goes and they're trying and to does... make him seem smart that he has this like clever way of like doing this, but also yeah. it's like so. The reason that this worked out is of complete chance to you. Right. Like, the only reason that they didn't get external help or, like, call that guy out is because of, like, the affair thing. So, like, this right. guy is just... What banking. if that didn't happen? Yeah, then this guy would have just been caught. The, a bunch of cops would have shown up and be like, hey, who's this guy in, like, a weird old man mask running around with a hammer? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just, like... Like, oh, yeah, there's cameras everywhere. Oh, I don't know. I guess we'll find who's doing this. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, the owner doesn't know about it. So it just seems like there's so many ways that, like, this method can go south for him. That, like, throwing it in at the end, it's, like, after everything. So you don't have that in mind. You're not, like, thinking about that. And you're, like, whoa, it's supposed to be just, like, whoa, this is crazy, you know? It wasn't them. He does it. It could be anywhere, you know? Which like yeah. yeah, it's a cool idea. I, but did, also, I, I, I thought it was a cool concept. Oh yeah, like, and I and I did also for a slasher like the, movie, you know. Yeah, the feeds at the end, like I liked over the credits and stuff. That was cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. But it just, I don't think that whole angle jives with the I, that idea because he's not. It's like oh yeah, he just like chance happened into this these people. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. He, he wasn't in control of this at all. <laughs> like, in the least, you know? Yeah. but Like, they were their own worst enemy because they, you know, fucked up. Yeah. Did this thing. Because if they were all like, let's just get the fuck out of here right now and call the cops when you go, okay, let's go. Done. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they just <Yeah>. leave. <laughs> like, it literally would have happened. <laughs> yeah, totally. But, and I mean, he did gets... have the car. He did have the tire fucking thing on the trail. That's true. That's true. But... So they couldn't just leave, but... Then he also, though, to be waiting there. And... The only thing that was keeping them there at that point was the dog. That I did like the reveal at the end that he didn't kill the dog, that it was I'm, just like running around. I'm glad they didn't kill the dog. Yep. Yeah, I liked that. But then, like, that's also a thing where it's like, that's the only other reason that they didn't just fucking get out of there. Because they were like, we got to find the dog. I'm not leaving here without my dog. Right. So it's like another kind of chance thing that. Totally. It's like they would have just gone like, hey, come here, bud. Let's fuck. It really wasn't even on the this quote unquote mastermind, you know? It was, yeah. Like, he had nothing to do with their demise mm-hmm. other than them just like being their own worst enemies. Yeah, totally. And I don't know. Is that like the point or is because it seems like at the know. end it was trying to make it scary that like this guy like very calculated and he like does, does this all the time. But... Yeah. So that's sort of the like that's a big flaw because it's sort of like. They turn that, which is interesting because they turn to make it seem like, oh, like he was, oh, look, he was in control of this the whole time. You're never going to want to go to an Airbnb, you know, but it's like, yeah, when you look back, it's like, yeah, like you said, he had no control over the actual like outcome, really. Like they, they all fucked up on their, on themselves. Maybe that's the point. And maybe that is the point. Um, yeah. But like, I don't know. He, you can't make it seem like he is like this like you said mastermind of uh this really smart serial killer with this technology um when he had no hand in the actual end result of of the killings really other than yeah and it's trying like, to escape it then hitting them with a hammer they don't you explicitly know. like try they, they don't go he's a fucking genius but i do think there is part of the ending that make it seem like this is like you know, oh, that, you're supposed oh, to think that. 
Yeah, he's right? a serial killer, and this is what he knows he's what he's talking about. Meticulous, and like, he's mat- yeah. yeah, exactly. He's gonna set up this technology and spy on you, but then it's like, okay, so he does that, and then he just comes in and kills people. I, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Does yeah. he just try and find dirt on people and then then exploit it and then kill them? Maybe that's yeah, his thing. Yeah, like maybe he waits until that happens and that's the reason that he did it, but doesn't really get into that at all, which is like no. okay, sure. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just a thing where it was like it was fun even though I was calling it out, it was still fun to watch, but then yeah, like once I started to like think about things, it just like breaks down. It's like, oh yeah. yeah. It's like this like isn't meant to be thought about, but then it's like, okay, well, that's not great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh yeah. I did like the mask. That was yeah, kind of cool. If creepy. you notice it was the same it was modeled after the face of um of what's his name? The guy who was the the caretaker. Oh, really? Uh, Toby to- Toby Huss. If you look really closely at it, it I think it was modeled from his face because you can tell from like the eyes and stuff. Wow. I noticed that. Um That's pretty I think cool. they like took I think they took a mold of his face and made it mm. hairless and stretched it out a little bit. Um I did like that he kind of moved like a normal person too. Like they're not trying to do like a Michael Myers. Yeah. Kind of, you know, mm. the way he moves. Um, like this otherworldly being that just this unstoppable force will keep walking towards you no matter what. Um, he like ran and things. He was a normal guy. That was an interesting take, but I don't know. As people who have made a slasher and uh, people who enjoy those types of movies, I have a certain found respect for people attempting to do such a thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I just think um, if you're going to have this kind of funding and resources, maybe yeah. do something a little bit more with it. I don't know. Yeah, like I would have liked, I think, yeah, just certain things if they tried to do different, like... Just having, having in the beginning Dan Stevens and this woman that he works with and be, immediately being like, oh, they're going to fuck. It would have been yeah. great if at the end you were just, like, proved wrong. It's like, oh, no, they're just, like, responsible and just, like, have, like, a platonic relationship. They, like, completely have a platonic relationship. There's <laughs> yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and really that have scene made in the hot tub, work. they're like, hey, I just, like, really value you as a person. And she's like, yeah, I do, too. You're great. And it's like, cool. That's enough. Right. Yeah. Would That's even just subverting it enough yeah you know what i mean to be like there was something in there that was a little different but i don't know it just uh if it's it does all the tropes or not all of them but a lot of them but it's still fun i don't know what i wanted to i wanted to say that uh the thing i was slightly surprised by was going into the secret room and finding that it was nothing yeah totally i thought that was kind of a nice Mm. change you know yeah okay like looking through a bunch of junk pretty much and they did point out literally with like what I kind of thought was like I thought there'd be some monitors and mm-hmm. you know like a computer and shit like a like a control what? room. Totally. What were the Polaroids though? Or like he found something. He's like, you don't want to know. And then it's they like, never. That? That's a good point. They never explain that. They never explain what yeah, those are. It was a little weird. Yeah, that's a good point. I for, I forgot about it because they like bring that up. You never see them. I'm guessing you could just sort of assume that, oh, these are other victims, but then he moves. It's not like the same house or anything. Yeah, so why would it be other So it's victims? like, why, yeah. It's like nude photos or something, and it's just like, yeah, the guy just happens to have those also. Who owns this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get what it was trying to, like, do with all that. You know what I mean? And, like, I saw the IndieWire review... Hmm. like headline and i was like what the fuck are they talking about yeah a horror movie about the friction between our eroding public trust and our addiction to apps that depend on the upon the kindness of strangers i mean i get what they're trying to say a little bit like because they're it's talking about like oh they just kind of depended on this app to be like oh this is a safe place we where we can stay yeah, but the movie's, like, not about that at all. It's just, like, what happens in it. It's not, like, examining that. Right. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, true. That's you know true. what I mean? I just thought that was a little goofy. I was like, mm, I don't know if it's like about that. I think it's just about people in an affair and then they get killed. <laughs> 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 don't cheat. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I maybe had one more. Um, I don't know if you got this sense, but while I was sort of watching, I got like a weird, I, I don't know if it was intentional or unintentional. It might've been like a subconscious thing on Dave Franco's part, but I got like a weird autobiographical sense on this and the terms of the characters, the two brothers. Oh, I feel yeah. like the younger I I brother was, about that. I, I got it. Yeah. I, I feel like the younger brother was sort of an expression of Dave Franco and then mm-hmm. Dan Stevens was maybe James Franco. Interesting. Yeah, I don't. I just did not even think about that. I think maybe it could have been like a subconscious dynamic that he sort of wrote because he did write the script, mm-hmm. or maybe it's sort of autobiographical. Maybe fucking James Franco. We for maybe he's a dirty guy who, you know, slept with his girlfriend or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Totally. Or maybe it's completely co- coincidental. But I got mm-hmm. like a strange autobiographical dynamic between the brothers and i thought it was an interesting comparison between those two and dave franco and james franco yeah got like a weird that's interesting so i, I don't know something that. i observed yeah because there was I that observed. scene of them like roughhousing and just like wrestling yeah. each other and shit like really aggressive yeah i don't know yeah that's interesting kind of called out to me you can su- subscribe to that i was also yeah. gonna say when i was watching it i was disappointed in that I would have given this movie a full star bump if you know the shot where he's in at the end it's like showing all the footage and he like installs the shower camera and like yeah. walks away if he installed the shower camera and took off the mask and it was Dave Franco <laughs> 100% would get a full star bump <laughs> yeah. for that <laughs> yeah things getting a bump baby <laughs> cause part of me I was like is that about to happen i thought for a second because you only see the back of his head i thought i was like i did think for a second oh i think that might be dave franco playing the killer but i I don't think it was if it was like him taking the mask off and like looking right in the camera and like smiling (laughs) and like freeze framing on his face (laughs) just dave franco's face it zooms in on the freeze frame like i would have been that would have been incredible yeah incredible uh yeah so i think that pretty much wraps up our thoughts um what are you gonna rate this movie give it a three that's that's what i was feeling yeah yeah it's like not terrible good in the middle had some stuff that was enjoyable like i i had fun watching it it wasn't terrible yeah i didn't like Um, hate it it was just like pretty expected yeah like some of the choices they make are just like frustrating yeah, especially Allison Brie not doing the drugs. You gotta do the drugs. The you gotta do the night. drugs. No That's... one's doing it night two. Nobody. No one is ever gonna do it night two. No, night one. Um, <laughs> got to. If everyone else is doing it, you gotta do it with them. You know. Yeah. Or you have a buffer if you're staying there three days, maybe the last day. But yeah, definitely not like, the night after. It's like I'm gonna be tired if on this hike tomorrow. So. Yeah. Y'all can do it. It's like, oh, you don't think they're going to be tired on the hike tomorrow? No one's right. going on the fucking hike. No one's All going right? on the hike. They're doing drugs. <laughs> do the hike the next day. <laughs> yeah. <Fucking Exactly>. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny. All right. Well, All right. that's going to wrap it up for our thoughts on this. Uh, as always, you can find other episodes of this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and if you enjoy the show, leave us a review on iTunes, because every rating brings more listeners. You can email us at listen to us rant about movies at gmail.com. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Sean Pierce, and our other Patreon supporters. You too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as $1. Visit www.patreon.com slash podcast. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, Rant and Ronnie. Thank you, Zach. 
Yeah, man. Good talk as always. Until next time. Thanks for listening to this Listen to Us Roundabout Movies podcast episode. Goodbye, and I will see you again on the next show. Thank you.